Ever wondered why being too nice might not be so nice after all for your relationships? Today, we're tackling the curious case of the overly nice guy and the subtle traps it sets in romantic dynamics. While the intention to be considerate and ever-present sounds noble, it often leads to less respect and attraction from your partner. In today's discussion, we'll explore 10 ways overly nice guys often get it wrong in relationships. From always saying yes to instantly forgiving. Stoic principles offer a sturdy guide to maintaining dignity, commanding respect, and ensuring that you're not just loved, but also respected in your relationships. Remember, it's not about being less caring, but about caring smartly and with self-respect. Ready to change how you approach your relationships and life? Make sure you hit the like button if you find this video helpful, subscribe for more insights, and share it with friends who might benefit. Now, let's dive in. Number one, perpetually available. One of the biggest mistakes overly nice guys make in relationships is falling into the paradox of availability. Consider this scenario. You've just started dating someone new. Naturally, you're thrilled and eager to spend as much time as possible with your partner. So, whenever they text you, you respond immediately. Whenever they want to meet up, you clear your schedule. While this may seem like a thoughtful way to show you care, it can actually be counterproductive. Who wants to be with someone who's always available and has nothing else going on in their life? From a stoic perspective, maintaining balance and moderation is key. Being overly accessible can harm the relationship more than it helps. By always being available, you risk making your partner feel overwhelmed and pressured. It's important to remember that it's healthy to have your own commitments and stick to them. This not only alleviates some of the pressure in the relationship, but also shows that you have a fulfilling life outside of it. Epictetus, a renowned Stoic philosopher, emphasized the importance of self-control and personal boundaries, reminding us that wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Let's look at an example. John, a classic nice guy, has just started dating Sarah. He likes her a lot and wants to show his affection, so he's always available for her. If she calls him in the middle of his work, he drops everything to talk to her. When she asks to meet, he cancels his plans with friends without hesitation. Initially, Sarah appreciates the attention, but over time, she starts feeling suffocated. She begins to lose respect for John because he seems to have no life of his own. John's constant availability leads Sarah to believe he values her more than his own personal growth and interests. So, how can nice guys avoid this trap? It's simple. Have a life of your own and prioritize your commitments. Don't be afraid to occasionally tell your partner that you have other plans. This doesn't mean you should be neglectful or indifferent, but rather that you should show you have a fulfilling life outside the relationship. It's perfectly fine to reschedule or set boundaries. Doing so demonstrates self-respect and can actually increase your attractiveness. By valuing your time and commitments, you not only maintain your self-respect, but also foster a healthier and more respectful relationship. Live your own life fully and let your partner see that you are an individual with passions and goals. This is the true essence of a balanced, stoic approach to relationships. Number two, instant forgiveness. Being forgiving can be a wonderful trait and it's crucial for a strong relationship. However, not everything should be forgiven right away. People who are overly nice often make a habit of letting their friends and partners off the hook without hesitation whenever they mess up. They always welcome them back with open arms. Imagine a friend who repeatedly lets you down and fails to keep their promises. It would be frustrating for anyone. 
but someone who is too accommodating might not hold them accountable for their repeated failures. They'd forgive and move on, regardless of how many times their friend lets them down. So, why is it important not to forgive instantly? The main issue is that it can harm the relationship. Immediate forgiveness can create a harmful dynamic, signaling to the other person that they can act without consequence. If they know you'll always forgive them, they may feel free to disregard your feelings and boundaries. This lack of accountability often leads to nice people being exploited, as their friends don't see any repercussions for their actions and consequently lose respect for them. Therefore, it's important to avoid immediate forgiveness. Don't act as if your friends never make mistakes. Trust is essential, and giving people the benefit of the doubt is important. But you also need to consider your own feelings. Your emotions and thoughts are just as valid as anyone else's. Don't forgive just because you feel obligated to. A common issue for overly nice individuals is that they may outwardly forgive while still holding on to resentment internally. In other words, you might not be ready to fully let go emotionally. It's perfectly okay to feel upset and take your time to process things. Nice people often try to ignore their negative emotions, but this denial only creates problems later. Rather than brushing issues aside, confront your feelings as they arise. This way, when someone apologizes, you'll genuinely be able to forgive them, rather than simply pretending to do so. From a Stoic perspective, this approach aligns with the idea of self-respect and maintaining inner balance. Marcus Aurelius, one of the great Stoic philosophers, taught us to recognize our own worth and to set boundaries that protect our peace of mind. Forgiveness should be a deliberate and thoughtful act, not an automatic response. Let's say you're dating someone who frequently cancels plans at the last minute. If you immediately forgive them every time, they might continue this behavior without considering your feelings. However, if you calmly explain how their actions affect you and take a step back to process your emotions, before forgiving, you're setting a clear boundary. This not only shows that you value yourself, but also encourages the other person to reflect on their behavior and make positive changes. Remember, true forgiveness is not about ignoring the hurt, but about acknowledging it, addressing it, and then moving forward with a clear and balanced mind. Number three, fostering doubt. Being overly kind doesn't always build trust. Sometimes it makes others suspicious of your motives. This might seem counterintuitive, especially if you believe that being nice will make you more likable. However, Stoicism teaches us the value of authenticity and integrity, which are essential for building genuine relationships. When you're excessively nice, people might think you have an ulterior motive, suspecting that you're being kind to manipulate them, even if that's not your intention. For example, you're dating someone new and you always agree with everything she says, never expressing your own opinions or preferences. At first, she might appreciate the agreement, thinking you're easygoing and supportive. But soon, she may start to wonder if you're just saying what she wants to hear to win her favor. This can lead to doubt and suspicion about your true intentions. To avoid this skepticism, it's crucial to express your true thoughts and feelings. Stoic philosophy encourages us to live according to our own values and beliefs, rather than simply conforming to others' expectations. Instead of telling people what they want to hear, be honest about your opinions. For example, if a woman asks for your opinion on a topic, don't be afraid to disagree respectfully if you have a different perspective. This doesn't mean being confrontational, but rather showing that you have your own views and are confident in expressing them. 
consider the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, who said, If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. This Stoic principle reminds us to act with integrity and honesty. By being genuine, you show others that you are trustworthy and confident in your own beliefs. This builds a stronger foundation for relationships, free from the shadows of skepticism and doubt. Stoicism also teaches us to be resilient and self-reliant. Epictetus emphasized the importance of being true to oneself and not seeking validation from others. When you're overly nice, you might be seeking approval or validation, which can undermine your own self-worth and create dependency. By staying true to your values and expressing your real thoughts, you build internal strength and independence, which are attractive qualities. Stay true to yourself, express your real thoughts, and let your actions reflect your true character. This way, you'll eliminate doubts and build deeper, more meaningful connections. Remember, genuine relationships are built on trust and mutual respect, not on superficial niceness or people-pleasing. Number four, always saying sorry. Overly nice people often make the mistake of apologizing for everything, even when it's not their fault. This behavior is driven by a desire to please others and avoid conflict, but it often backfires, creating more issues than it solves. Imagine a scenario where you're with a group of friends and someone suggests going to a restaurant you don't particularly like. Instead of voicing your preference, you go along with it to avoid seeming difficult. Later, you apologize for not enjoying the meal, even though it wasn't your choice. This constant need to apologize for things beyond your control can make you appear insecure and lacking in self-respect. From a Stoic perspective, this habit of over-apologizing stems from an improper understanding of what you are responsible for. You are responsible for your actions, decisions, and reactions, not for the feelings or actions of others. By constantly apologizing, you inadvertently signal that you're willing to take on responsibility for things outside your control, which is neither healthy nor practical. Consider the example of a man named Alex. Alex was always quick to say, I'm sorry for minor inconveniences, even if they weren't his fault. One day, his partner remarked that it felt like he was always walking on eggshells around her, and it made her uncomfortable. Alex realized that his excessive apologies were eroding his partner's respect for him and undermining his own sense of self-worth. Instead of over-apologizing, Alex decided to practice stoic principles. He began to reflect before apologizing, asking himself whether the situation truly warranted an apology or if it was something beyond his control. He started to express his opinions and preferences more confidently, understanding that being honest and assertive is not the same as being rude or disrespectful. By reducing unnecessary apologies, Alex found that his relationships improved. His partner appreciated his newfound confidence and felt more secure, knowing he would communicate honestly rather than constantly seeking to placate her. In summary, if you find yourself apologizing for every little thing, take a step back and consider whether those apologies are necessary. Focus on building confidence in your actions and decisions. Remember, a genuine apology is valuable and should be reserved for situations where you are truly at fault. By doing so, you'll not only strengthen your relationships, but also cultivate a greater sense of self-respect and integrity, aligning with the stoic belief in the importance of focusing on what you can control and accepting what you cannot. Number five, neglecting self-care. In the world of stoicism, one of the core principles is understanding and balancing your needs with those of others. Unfortunately, many nice guys fall into the trap of ignoring their own needs entirely. They often believe that by always putting others first, 
they are doing the right thing. However, this can lead to a life of unfulfillment and missed opportunities. According to Stoic philosophy, it is essential to find a balance. Marcus Aurelius once said, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. This means that while it's important to be kind and helpful, you must also take care of your own needs. Focusing on your personal growth and well-being is not selfish. It's necessary for a balanced and fulfilling life. For instance, consider David, a nice guy who always helps his colleagues at work. He stays late to assist them with their tasks, often missing out on his own hobbies and interests. David enjoys being known as the helpful guy, but over time, he begins to feel resentful and exhausted. He's putting everyone else's needs before his own, and it's taking a toll on his happiness and productivity. David's situation worsens when he starts dating someone. He prioritizes her needs over his own, constantly trying to make her happy at the expense of his own well-being. He cancels plans with friends, skips his workouts, and even compromises on his personal goals just to ensure she's content. Eventually, David feels lost and disconnected from his true self. To change this, David needs to adopt a stoic mindset. He should start by setting boundaries and prioritizing his needs. By doing so, he will not only take better care of himself, but also become more effective in helping others. It's about striking a balance where you can support others without sacrificing your well-being. According to Stoic wisdom, self-care is essential. Epictetus, another great Stoic philosopher, emphasized the importance of knowing what is within our control and what is not. David can only control his actions and choices, not the reactions or happiness of others. By focusing on what he can control, he can lead a more balanced and fulfilling life. For David, this means scheduling time for his interests and goals, even if it means saying no to others occasionally. It means having honest conversations with his partner about his needs and ensuring his well-being is not constantly compromised. It's about understanding that prioritizing his needs is not a sign of selfishness, but a necessary step towards a healthier, happier life. Remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. Take care of yourself first, and you'll be in a better position to help others effectively. So. Don't neglect your needs. Prioritize them and watch how it transforms your life and relationships. By balancing kindness to others with kindness to yourself, you'll find a path to true fulfillment and strength. If you've journeyed with me this far and are still engaged, I invite you to take a brief pause and comment below with, take care of myself first. This simple act signifies that you genuinely resonate with the message we've been exploring. Your participation means a lot, and it's a testament to your commitment to personal growth. Now let's delve deeper and continue our exploration together. Number six, hesitation in refusing. Saying no is a crucial aspect of maintaining healthy relationships, especially when viewed through the lens of stoicism. Stoicism teaches us the importance of self-control and setting boundaries, which are essential for personal well-being and respect in relationships. Nice guys often struggle with this concept. They have a tendency to say yes to everything, even when they don't want to. This stems from a desire to please others and avoid conflict. However, constantly agreeing to things can lead to feelings of resentment and being taken advantage of. Imagine a friend who always asks for favors. If you never say no, you might find yourself overwhelmed and feeling used. This is not a stoic way to live, as it disrupts your inner peace and self-respect. On the other hand, the willingness to say no can foster respect from others. When you set boundaries, you show that you value your time and energy. This doesn't mean being rude or dismissive. 
It's about being honest and assertive. For example, if a colleague asks you to take on extra work that you can't handle, a stoic response would be to politely decline and explain your reasons. This demonstrates self-control and respect for your own limits. Moreover, saying no also encourages others to respect your boundaries. When people see that you are willing to stand up for yourself and prioritize your well-being, they are more likely to appreciate your time and effort. For instance, if a friend repeatedly asks you to hang out when you have important tasks to complete, saying no respectfully can help them understand and value your priorities. This not only benefits you, but also improves the quality of your relationships, making them more genuine and balanced. Being overly nice and always saying yes can also lead to a loss of self-identity. When you constantly prioritize others' needs over your own, you risk losing sight of your own values and goals. This can result in a life that feels unfulfilled and disconnected from your true self. Stoicism encourages us to live according to our principles and to be true to ourselves. By saying no when necessary, you ensure that your actions align with your values and that you are living authentically. So, don't hesitate to say no when needed. It's not about being harsh, but about protecting your well-being and maintaining your self-respect. In doing so, you will cultivate more meaningful and balanced relationships, where your time and efforts are truly appreciated. This approach aligns with the Stoic principle of living a life of virtue and wisdom, ensuring that your actions reflect your true values and priorities. Remember, saying no is not a sign of weakness or selfishness. It is a testament to your strength and commitment to living a life that is true to yourself. Number seven, exchange investment. Often, nice guys make the mistake of being the sole contributors. They pour excessive time and effort into the relationship while their partners barely lift a finger. This one-sided investment is detrimental as genuine trust and connection are built on mutual effort and shared responsibility. For example, you're always the one planning dates, making calls, and ensuring everything runs smoothly, while your partner rarely puts in the same effort. This imbalance doesn't foster stronger connections. Instead, it creates resentment and frustration. Stoicism teaches us to recognize the importance of equality in relationships. Every relationship should be a shared journey, not a scenario where one person carries the load. Nice guys often know something is off. They sense their relationships aren't equitable, but fail to address it, accepting inconvenience as long as their partners are unaffected. While this might seem noble on the surface, it harms the relationship in the long run. Stoicism emphasizes the importance of addressing these imbalances. For a relationship to thrive, both parties need to be invested. Without mutual commitment, the relationship is likely to struggle over time. Imagine another scenario where a man consistently agrees to his partner's demands, sacrificing his own needs and desires. This might seem like a way to maintain harmony, but it often leads to burnout and dissatisfaction. Stoicism encourages us to find a middle ground where both partners' needs are met. By setting boundaries and ensuring reciprocal investment, you create a healthier, more balanced relationship. Being overly nice can sometimes be perceived as a lack of self-respect. When you constantly give without expecting anything in return, it can signal to others that your time and effort are not valuable. Stoicism teaches the importance of self-respect and dignity. You deserve a partner who values and reciprocates your efforts. By standing up for yourself and seeking balance, you demonstrate self-respect, which is attractive and strengthens the relationship. Additionally, consider the long-term effects of unbalanced relationships. Over time, the person who constantly gives 
will feel drained and unappreciated. The partner who takes without giving will never learn to value and invest in the relationship. This dynamic leads to dissatisfaction and eventual breakdown of the relationship. Stoicism reminds us that for a relationship to endure, both partners must be willing to invest equally. By applying Stoic principles, you can learn to set boundaries and expect reciprocal effort. This not only ensures fairness, but also strengthens the bond between you and your partner. Remember, a balanced relationship benefits everyone involved and fosters genuine, lasting connections. Number eight, intense resentment. When you're excessively nice, frustration is inevitable. Many nice guys believe that their kindness and selflessness should be reciprocated by friends and partners. However, when reality doesn't align with these expectations, resentment starts to build. Imagine always going out of your way to help someone, but never feeling that the favor is returned. Over time, this disappointment can turn into a heavy burden of resentment. Suppose you always make time for your partner, canceling your own plans to be there for them. Yet when you need support, they aren't as accommodating. Initially, you might push aside your negative emotions, thinking you're being understanding. But eventually, these feelings of frustration and hurt accumulate and can cause serious harm to the relationship. This scenario is a classic example of why nice guys often find themselves struggling in relationships. Their expectations, while coming from a good place, set them up for inevitable disappointment. In Stoicism, managing your expectations is crucial. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, advised, begin each day by telling yourself, today I shall be meeting with interference, ingratitude, insolence, disloyalty, ill will, and selfishness. This mindset helps to set realistic expectations about human behavior, acknowledging that not everyone will meet your level of selflessness. This isn't about becoming pessimistic. It's about being prepared for the reality of human nature and interactions. To prevent resentment from taking hold, adjust your expectations, not just of others, but also of yourself. Disappointment often stems from unrealistic expectations. By adopting a more practical view of your relationships, you can avoid the frustration that comes from expecting more than is reasonable. Instead of anticipating that others will always mirror your actions, understand that everyone has different capacities and ways of expressing care. Consider the example of a friend who always seems to take without giving back. You might feel hurt and unappreciated, Instead of allowing resentment to fester, reflect on why you're choosing to be so giving. Is it out of genuine care or are you hoping for something in return? A Stoic would advise doing good for the sake of being good, not for the recognition or reciprocation it might bring. A Stoic approach encourages focusing on what you can control, your actions and reactions. Instead of becoming resentful when others don't reciprocate your kindness, appreciate that your actions should come from a place of genuine goodwill rather than an expectation of return. This shift in perspective can help reduce frustration and build more resilient and healthy relationships. Epictetus, another Stoic philosopher, said, Don't demand that things happen as you wish, but wish that they happen as they do and you will go on well. By applying this principle, you release the need for control over others' actions and focus on your own virtue. Remember, being kind is a virtue, but allowing yourself to be consumed by unmet expectations and growing resentment is not. By setting realistic expectations and embracing a stoic mindset, you can maintain your inner peace and cultivate more balanced and fulfilling relationships. Focus on being kind because it aligns with your values, not because you expect something in return. 
This way, you can keep your relationships healthy and free from the poison of resentment. Number nine, surface level relationships. One of the biggest mistakes nice guys make is forming shallow bonds with women. Despite their best efforts, being overly nice often prevents them from developing deep, meaningful connections. This issue stems from their tendency to hide their true emotions and thoughts, fearing that honesty might lead to conflict. In the teachings of Stoicism, being genuine and true to oneself is crucial. The Stoics believed that we should express our true feelings and thoughts, even if it means facing disagreements. Avoiding conflicts out of fear can actually hinder the development of a closer, more authentic bond. Imagine a situation where you always agree with everything your partner says, just to keep the peace. While this might seem like a good way to avoid arguments, it actually prevents you from showing who you really are. Over time, this can lead to frustration and a feeling of being misunderstood. For instance, if your partner suggests a plan that you genuinely don't like, instead of just going along with it to avoid an argument, calmly express your true feelings. You might say, I appreciate your idea, but I have some concerns about it. Can we discuss this further? This approach not only shows that you respect yourself, but also that you respect your partner enough to be honest with them. Stoicism teaches us that disagreements are a natural part of human relationships. They can lead to productive compromises and ultimately strengthen the connection. By expressing your true emotions and thoughts, you create an opportunity for deeper understanding and mutual respect. Suppressing your feelings just to avoid conflict will only slow the progress of your relationship. Marcus Aurelius, one of the great Stoic philosophers, wrote in his meditations, waste no more time arguing what a good man should be, be one. This means that instead of worrying about whether your actions will be perceived as nice or agreeable, focus on being true to yourself and acting with integrity. Authenticity fosters respect and deeper connections. Building meaningful relationships involves more than just being nice. It requires honesty, vulnerability, and the courage to face conflicts head on. By adhering to stoic principles, you can cultivate relationships that are based on mutual respect and genuine understanding. So, embrace your true self, express your genuine feelings, and don't shy away from disagreements. Doing so will help you move beyond shallow bonds and create lasting, meaningful connections. Number 10, quick exhaustion. This happens when you take on too many responsibilities and believe it's your duty to make everything perfect. You might think that by always being available and supportive, you're doing the right thing. However, this often leads to you neglecting your own needs and burning out quickly. Relationships shouldn't be exhausting, yet for overly nice guys, they often are. Being overly nice often leads to actions that aren't true to ourselves, and this can create internal conflict and exhaustion. When you constantly put others before yourself, you're not being true to your own needs and boundaries. To avoid burnout, take a step back and let things flow naturally. Don't try to control every aspect of the relationship. It's okay to let go of the small stuff and focus on enjoying the time you spend together. Think of it like a stoic approach to life. Accept that you can't control everything and find peace in the present moment. By doing this, you allow your relationship to grow naturally without the added stress. This doesn't mean neglecting your partner. It means finding a healthy balance where both of you can thrive. Another key Stoic principle is to maintain your own inner peace. Epictetus, another Stoic philosopher, emphasized that we should keep our desires and aversions in check. Instead of constantly trying to please your partner and friends, focus on what truly matters to you. 
This doesn't mean you shouldn't be considerate or caring. It means you should also care for yourself and your own well-being. By prioritizing your own needs, you're better equipped to support others in a healthy and sustainable way. Imagine you're building a fire. If you keep adding logs and never give it a chance to catch properly, you'll end up with a smoldering mess instead of a warm, steady flame. The same goes for relationships. If you keep piling on responsibilities and never take the time to let things develop naturally, you'll burn out. Give yourself and your relationship space to breathe. Focus on mutual enjoyment and shared experiences rather than constant problem solving and caretaking. So, if you find yourself feeling burnt out from being overly nice, remember to slow down. Enjoy the moments you share without the pressure of making everything perfect. This way, you'll not only avoid burnout, but also build a stronger, more genuine connection with your partner and friends. Taking a more stoic approach to your relationships means valuing your own peace and happiness alongside that of your loved ones. By doing this, you create a balanced, fulfilling relationship that benefits everyone involved. We've explored a rich tapestry of ideas today, diving into the challenges that come with being too nice in relationships and how stoic wisdom can guide us towards healthier, more balanced interactions. Remember, stoicism doesn't suggest withdrawing your kindness or warmth. It teaches us to harmonize these virtues with dignity and self-respect. By avoiding the pitfalls of being perpetually available and quick to forgive, you can cultivate relationships that are not only loving, but deeply respectful. If today's insights have sparked a new perspective or reaffirmed your own experiences, I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Your engagement helps us grow and continue providing valuable insights. Have any thoughts or personal experiences with the challenges of being too nice? Please share them in the comments below. We value your input and enjoy learning from each other's journeys. For those eager to dive deeper into Stoic principles and apply them to various aspects of life, check out the recommended videos now appearing on your screen. Continue your journey with us, exploring how ancient wisdom can address modern day challenges and transform not just your relationships, but your approach to life itself. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.